We're at Portimao in Portugal. It's the opening round of the Moto3 Junior World Championship for 2015. Fabio Quartararo may have moved on to the World Championship and he really is doing great things over there, battling against some familiar faces in the World Championship. He's won the last two titles here in the FIM CV Repsol, but now it really is anyone's bet. There's some real talents in the field for 2015. A huge grid as well of 29 riders for this opening race of the season. We cannot wait to get underway. We're at the uh, Autodromo at the Algarve. It's just outside the very popular holiday resort of Alba Fuera. It's a superb circuit, 4.5 kilometers, 2.8 miles in length. Clockwise configuration, but so many elevation changes, which really do add to the drama and the excitement of the racing. They're able to follow each other so closely. Gregory Haynes with you. Luke Wilkins, uh, who's the English editor for MotoGP.com, is alongside me in the commentary box. Where do we start? There are so many talking points. We've had two amazing races for Moto2 and Superbike, but now we haven't even had a Moto3 Junior World Championship race yet. We haven't even had a chance to catch our breath, as you say, for the Moto2, an incredibly exhilarating uh, finish of the Superbike race. And now is where we think a lot of the very big excitement is going to come from for today, because these are really the best young, talented riders from around the world. You've got guys coming over from the Shell Advance Asia Talent Cup. You've got people from all different countries, from Australia, France. We mentioned, obviously, Italy. Clearly a lot of Spanish. There's 11 Spanish in this. The Dutchman Bo Ben Schneider is going to be starting from the front row. I think this is going to be carnage, and I think in the best possible way. These guys are just young, they have no fear, they're going to want to overtake at every opportunity, and I think they're all battling it out, obviously, to make the step up into the Moto3 World Championship. They most certainly are, and in a minute we'll run you through some of the previous champions here in the CV. It used to be 125, of course, then it became Moto3 in 2012. Just a bit of clarification then, if you're just tuning in for the first time today on what the CEV actually is. It's the FIM CEV Repsol. It is not the Spanish Championship. It used to be, and it's still often referred to as the Spanish Championship, but it's not anymore. It's very much a European-based uh, series. Now, of course, the Junior World Championship for Moto3. It is true that most of the races still take place in Spain because of the background of the series, but it's already expanding. There's the race here in Portugal. Next time out will be at Le Mans. The Moto3 class will have a single race there alongside the MotoGP race and uh, the same point system as the World Championship. So 25, 20, 16 and so on, down to one point for 15th place. And also just to point out the regulations and technical specifications of these bikes are exactly the same as the World Championship to make, as we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, to make it as an easier trans progression as possible for the rider from the CV to the Moto3 uh, World Championship if that's where they, they want to go and also a lot of the big teams of the World Championship are involved in this competition not only to help develop the chassis the engines but also say, to bring through the next crop of riders so you'll see like you have in Moto3 you've got the Leglise Academy part of the Husqvarna factory Leglise team you have the Ongeta Junior team of Geta Rivercold in the World Championship you have the Leopard Kame team you have Leopard Racing obviously with Danny Kent Hiroki Ono who used to last year uh, compete in the CEV as well I think he came was it third overall I um, and you just see Aspar team Mahindra, you've got the junior team Australia Galizzi, obviously, who's Fabio Quartararo is now competing for as the full, not junior team in the Moto3 World Championship, and many, many more. So, this is going to be, I think, pretty impressive and pretty spectacular. A lot of these riders, obviously, debuting the championship this year, while a lot are coming back. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just looking through the results from the single Moto3 race here from uh, last time out, we, well, last time we were here, which was the penultimate meeting of the 2014 season, only five point scorers from that race are actually racing here again today. That's uh, just running them through. Belega, Ben Snader, Pizzoli, Canet and Noridin. And we'll mention Noridin very soon because that's the Asia Talent Cup team, the Asia Talent team as it's actually known. Three riders who've really uh, been doing great stuff last year and this year in two cases in the Shell Advance Asia Talent Cup. Uh, let's start with the weather. I think we've got to start with the weather. The sun is beating down. I'm really pleased to see there are a really good amount of fans yeah. in the grandstand. Now, at the back of the picture there, you're seeing, obviously, empty stands, but the main grandstand, it really does... It's deceptive. It's such a massive grandstand. It can seat 17,000 people. Obviously, it's not going to be full for a smaller event like this, but there's a great number of fans coming, and I was worried, I have to say, coming into the track today because we'd had a heavy rain shower overnight I thought oh, this might put people off coming in but that's not the case and just in case you're wondering if uh, that is one near the pole sitter whether he's actually experiencing any problems uh, they're not there is a rule in this class where the riders have to turn off their engine at the back of the grid and be pushed into position to stop any instance where they might knock into each other so don't worry he's not had an engine failure they'll start the bike on the actual grid when he's there with a proper engine starter uh, as we saw with Fanati's incident the other day Moto3 it's, it's quite hard as IO tried to find out it's to a bump stop one of these but there they have to push the bike 
to the actual uh, starting position and then then they'll sort it all out and start it from there. So uh, don't panic. One minute on pole there for, as we mentioned, the Mikado Leopard car mating. Yep, that's the team that's doing such great stuff at the moment with Danny Kent in particular over in the World Championship. Juan Mir then uh, from Parma de Mallorca, 17 years of age. And if you watch the Red Bull MotoGP Rookies Cup last year, you'll know him very well. Finished second overall there to Jorge Martin, who's another one who's now in the World Championship. Three wins in the Rookies last year, the Rookies Cup for Mir, uh, Jerez, Bruno and Aragon. Of course, Rookies Cup doesn't race here at Portimao because the MotoGP World Championship doesn't come here. That's one difference. Rookies Cup only races on MotoGP weekends, whereas CEV is a little bit different. And this is a man we need to watch out for as well, a member of the VR46 Rider Academy. Yeah, Nicolo Belega, 15-year-old Italian member, as you mentioned, the VR46 uh, Rider Academy, obviously set up by Valentino Rossi to ensure the best crop of Italian talent coming through. He raced in the championship last year. The six overall, is that correct? Uh, on the KTM uh, Team Calvo bike, uh, managed to get 95 points. And uh, you know what? I think he's looked very impressive throughout the weekend and could be, as you say, a man to watch. Well, we saw David Clares, who's one of our uh, colleagues here, who's doing photographs down on the grid when we arrived on Friday. And he was actually taking photos of Belega at the time, wasn't he? And he just looked very confident, didn't he, yeah. the way he was standing there posing with the bike. So that's Mir, Belega, one and two. Bo Ben Snader here. And a bit of a message there to keep fighting, of course. It's nice to see that uh, message, of course. But Bo Ben Snader, third on the grid. Went well here last year. He didn't even qualify in the top 12, but fought through to sixth position. And he's the member of uh, the Rider Academy over in the Netherlands. It's the KNMV Talent Selection Program. It's headed up by Barry Veneman, who actually joined me here in the commentary box for this Portimao CV round last year. And again, Luke Bobensnader, another hot shot from Red Bull rookies. Very much so. And he's racing for the Dutch racing team here today. And I think, as you said, he could be one to watch. And then as you move on to the second row, we uh, come to Albert Arena, a Spaniard from the Leglise Academy, which is part of the Husqvarna factory Leglise team, uh, riding uh, uh, on a KTM today on Dunlops. And I think, again, you know, he looked very, very quick from qualifying. It was only, what, eight tenths back from one mere. So, uh, yeah, there, there's going to be a lot of riders competing at the front, especially, as you said, practice and qualifying happened in completely different conditions to this. Obviously, just mentioned Dunlop, just to quickly go back over that again in case you're just switching on um, Luke Brett practically here, the same Dunlop tyres you'd find over in the World Championship yeah, for Pretty three. much identical, and as you say, it, everything they try to make it that everything in this championship, and same with the Moto 2 European Championship, same with the Moto obviously 3 Studio um, World Championship, is identical to the World Championship. So that as a rider, when you make the step up, and as you talked about Jesco Raffin earlier in Moto 2, obviously winner of the Moto 2 um, CV Repsol Championship last year. He struggled this season because he's having to adjust to new tyres, he's having to adjust to so much more. If they don't have to think about that, it's a lot easier for a rider to get on and get racing. This is Curry Powie. He actually tops the warm-up session this morning, the 15-minute warm-up on the TSR Honda. He's starting in the middle of the second row of the 16-year-old from Malaysia. Watch out for him. Quite a few Malaysians, aren't there, at the moment, up and coming in the ranks. And just behind him will be the number 44. That's Aaron Canet, another one of the uh, Spaniards in the field, completing that second row. Another one of the strong young riders coming from Valencia. And he did take part last year in three races, in one of the Hondas, uh, finishing 23rd uh, overall in the championship. Yeah, which isn't too bad at all, is it, really, considering he only did three races. This is Canet, then, and uh, there's the rundown on the right-hand side. That graphic will obviously update as we go through the season. You see... Lem there, L-E-M, Le Mans. It will only be Moto3 competing at Le Mans, just as they did in the CV last year. A one-race fixture there for them uh, alongside MotoGP. Uh, not too long now, is it? If we just quickly run through the calendar to let you know, by the way, Le Mans will be the next round. And it's uh, on the 16th of May. Then we're off to Barcelona, Aragon, Albacete, Navarra, and two meetings within the space of two weeks at the end of the year. Jerez and Valencia will be the finale on the 15th of November and some supporters there in the stand for Jean Mir that's nice to see and there's Jean Massia as well which uh, he is on the junior team Australia in Galizia 0-0 along with uh, Sene Yamada the Japanese rider also his teammate um, and Jean Massia is I believe if I'm not mistaken really the youngest rider in the tournament just 14 uh, from Valencia yeah, surprisingly the, enough yeah the youngest by the matter of I think it's about five months Tony Arbelino is the second youngest they're both 14 years of age are at the top of the entry list aren't they because they're numbers four and five but uh, yeah, Messia, as you say, just outside Valencia, 14 years of age. What were you doing when you were 14? I think I 
Do you know what? I was probably even an everlasting, well, what was marketed as an everlasting gobstopper, and uh, <laughs> I don't know, probably doing my maths homework. I'm not entirely sure. I can't remember that far back. <laughs> at, least you were, at least you were doing your homework. That's, yeah. that's good. Um, yeah, that, that may have been a lie. Um, but yeah, and Martin Van Haren here. Now, this guy is riding on an FTR KTM, FTR frame, isn't it? Chassis with a KTM engine for the uh, KRP team, run by Martin Keep, British team involved with the Racing Steps Foundation. And uh, Martin does great work bringing through the best crop of young British riders. And we were talking to him the other day, weren't we, quite some length, about actually how many British riders have made it into the World Championship that haven't had some kind of contact with him. And it was very few. He even had a bike. Um, I think one of the few riders that had him was Scott Redding. And he had a bike prep for him to ride, but he never got around to him because he made the step up. Yeah, Mark Keane's father, who we sadly lost about a month ago, worked with um, some other familiar names as well, didn't he, over Keith the years? Keith Barry Ewan, Sheen. for example, a certain voice of uh, Roger, <laughs> Roger Keane, an absolute legend. And they also yeah. work very closely with Roger Keyes, who uh, yes. in the UK runs the Fab and Metric Racing Series, I believe. So uh, they kind of almost single-handedly have been very determined to encourage young British riders to come through. And they've been in this um, championship now for, what, 13 years? Absolutely. Well, they first came in, actually, in 95. And then, yeah, as you say, they, they went and then they came back again about 13 years ago. This, in the meantime, is um, the number four, Tony Arbelina. Now, he's riding with the 658 Squadra Corsi team. That's the team set up and uh, overseen by Paolo Simoncelli, father, of course, of the late great Marco, who we so tragically lost back in 2011. Watch out, then, for Arbelina. He's starting very much up there, uh, very much in contention, ninth on the grid. Here is the full grid, then. Drummere. Straight across from Red Bull rookies into the CV, heading the grid. Then it's Malega and Ben Snader for Holland up there on row one. Arenas, Howie, who was quickest in the warm-up this morning. Canet is sixth. Then it's Massia, Van Haren from Belgium. And Tony Arbellino, the second of the two Italians there inside the top nine. Four Spanish riders inside the top nine. Shows you the strength of what you have from the Spanish Championship. Lorenzo Petrarca, another Italian there, starting from 10th from the front of row four. They have David Sanchez and Stefano Valtellini. Zeno Yamada, the Japanese rider on row five, with Davido Pezzoli and Lorenzo Dalla. Interesting to see that the uh, Asia Talent Team riders are completely locked together on the grid as well. Yuta Date 17th, Adam Noridin 18th, Kaito Toba, the reigning champion from the Asia Talent Cup. There he is, 19th on the grid. Aleish View, I was talking to him, the 14-year-old in the media centre this morning. He is hoping for rain. I'm not sure he's going to get it. And there's Simon Danilo as well. That's the brother of Jul Danilo, who's racing over in the World Championship with a massive grid, 29 riders. Good to see as well, Luke, that uh, Nunez has been able to start special dispensation because he was outside the 110% in qualifying. Uh, but obviously they've locked race direction out of his practice times and they've decided it would not be a danger to have him in the race. That's why he's lining up down there in 29th place. Also starting from the head of row nine is Laurie Cresson, the Belgian rider for RBA Racing, who recently filled in for Anna Carrasco in the uh, Motor 3 World Championship when she'd uh, done her uh, collarbone. So he's had experience riding at the top. He'll disappointed to have come back and to be starting in 25th place. So, stand by for drama. Just five seconds to go until the warm-up lap gets underway. It's the first race in the Moto3 Junior World Championship of 2015. I hope you're as excited as we are. We've been looking forward to this one in particular for a very long time now. It's uh, had to wait a while, haven't we, for the CV to get underway. It's now, what are we now? This is the 26th of April today. Unbelievable. We'll be into May. How quick this year is flying by. We're now waiting for the warm-up lap to get underway. And then it's that run down to the first corner. And I'll tell you what, all the guys are going on their warm-up. But let's just have a little look back over the years of the riders that have come through from the Moto3 or originally the 125 Spanish Championship to compete in the World Championship. And it, honestly, it reads like a Hall of Fame for most GP. Hector Barbara, Alvaro Bautista, Alasia Spargo, Paula Spargo, Stefan Bradl, Efren Vasquez, currently competing with Danny Kent and Hiroki Ono in Moto3. Maverick Vinales in 2010, Alex Rins in 2011, Alex Marquez. In 2012, I mean, you know, it goes on and on. And obviously, as you mentioned, Fabio Quartararo. So I think you can see why we're so excited about this. There's a very good chance. Right now, we're looking at one or two future world champions at such a young age. I mean, I wish I could go out on a Moto2 bike at 14 and do what they're doing. But as you say, it's not all fun and games. We popped down to the... Um, Asia Talent Team garage yesterday, and considering it's three 14-year-olds who've travelled halfway around the world to come race here, you'd, uh, you'd think they'd be a bit relaxed, but they were very focused, very serious, and it, it's, it's professional racing now, even at that age, isn't it? And eight riders in the field were in this field last year, but just going through the top four from the championship from last year alone, Quartararo, Navarro, Ono, Gabriel Rodrigo, one, two, three, four, all names you'll be familiar with, I'm sure, from the Moto3 World Championship. What a selection of colours and bikes and riders and nationalities we have here in the field. As we say, there's 29 of them lining up on the grid. It'll be a 16-lap race then here for Motor 3. Just under 75 kilometres, 45 miles of racing around this 4.5-kilometre, 2.8-mile 
Portimao track. It opened back in 2008. Had a bit of Formula One testing, some car racing as well. Don't get the F1 testing here anymore. Of course, they uh, have been a little bit stricter in recent years, have Formula One with their testing program. Very much as is the case, of course, in MotoGP and World Superbike. What is Juan Mir going to do, though, from that pole position? First full season in the CV. He's on pole. He's got Belega and Ben Snader alongside, who are, you know, familiar faces, let's say. A uh, bit of a challenge for Juan Mir, but I'm sure he's relishing it. One of the biggest things left to avoid is getting swallowed up at the first corner, especially the first time starting to pole the championship. And it, I think, as you said there, Moto3 around this circuit is going to be very hard for someone to get in the front and, you know, break the rest of the field because of the slip streaming down the long straight, because of the flowing corners. So I think we are going to see a very contested race. Uh, just another name to put on the celebrity all-star CEV Repsol Moto3 uh, kind of Hall of Fame is obviously Maria Herrera. She so close to winning the championship in 2013. Injury, as you said, stopped her really kind of challenging Fabio Quattararo last year. Again, some great performances. Took her, I think she took a race for in as well, didn't she, last year? And obviously having moved up into the Moto3 championship so far our best finish of 17 in Austin, but you've got a lot of pace on the bike, and so you can really see how this championship does bring through the talent. Right then, stand by for drama. There's your pole sitter, Juan Mir, making his way through, weaving his way through, as he's uh, had to do. Now pulls up into pole position for the start of the Moto3 Junior World Championship in 2015. Bolega alongside him. There he is on the right-hand side. This is Bo Bensnader, the Dutchman. So much promise. One at Assen in the Red Bull Rookies last year. He's a very, very quick rider. Sponsored by uh, Bact, I should say, by the 10 Kart 8 team. Don't forget that's the team supporting the uh, running the Hondas in the World Superbike Championship. Row two is Arenes Powie, who was quickest in the warm up. And Aaron Canet. So many new riders in the field. Very late, actually, there to form up was uh, Canet at the back of the second row. We're all ready for drama, though. Watch out for green flag at the back. Red flag removed from the front. As soon as that green flag crosses, halfway across, which it does now, then watch the lights. The 2015 Moto3 Junior World Championship begins now. Very strong start from Mir. Strong start also from Belega from second on the grid. Not so good from Ben Stader, who drops back from third on the grid. He's about fifth as they get down to the first corner. Are they all going to get through cleanly? Hold your breath. It's turn one at Portimao. It's all looking good so far, but a great start from the pole sitter. And Belega just got absolutely stood up there turn one uh, on the inside as number I think it's 52 is that someone that came in let's have a look they're certainly all clean through the first two corners which is the main thing that we were expecting but well, not expecting it's a bit unfair of me we were hoping there would not be a problem but we wouldn't have been surprised if there was Juan Mir with the advantage look at Nicolo Belega up the inside be very very careful Nicolo and he holds that third place for the time being they're all through the hairpin at turn five the rain has stayed away that was another worry for today and for now it's all clean definitely though Mir is pulling away at the front of the race great start given a complete mockery to what we're saying about someone not being able to pull away at the front of a Moto3 field taking a leap at Danny Kent's foot yeah Mir looking very comfortable on the bike straight away Ben Snyder has dropped back slightly on the orange bike from the front row of the grid. Look at them streaming their way up to the, uh, down I should say, to the Craig Jones corner for the first time. And now there's real battle going on for second place. Belega is certainly very much in the mix there. And they are side by side as they get down to the left hand. Turn 12, is he through? No, Belega still down there at the moment in that third position. Belega, as you can see, conscious to not let me get too big a gap at the front if he really wants to make sure he gets through into second and start closing him down to say very well done to everybody they really are uh, clean aren't they around this first lap and uh, very much stuck together this is the difference we're going to see I think in the midfield in comparison with the Moto2 and the Moto uh, sorry and the Superbike race we saw earlier on uh, it's very much bunched together as you can see here in the battle for second place and that is Arenas and as you can see someone else coming through there to, to challenge Belega and Arenas and he's taken third place Remarkable stuff. That is Arenas second. Canet is up there now. Canet is the rider who started sixth on the grid and was uh, the last rider to actually form up on the start of Almost banging fairings there, but Bulega for now goes second. What's happened, of course, is that Mir has pulled away. Thank you very much and goodbye. 1.1 seconds in the lead, and there's the gap. But Bulega has got through to second, and immediately he's looking like he wants to hunt him down. But will Mir still be able to uh, pull away from these guys now? It did seem, and this is no disrespect to, uh, to Arenas, he was holding him up slightly, was he not? Yeah, I agree with you. Tony Arbolino, good start as well, by the way, still running in sixth place up to the hairpin for the second time. So it is Mir leading the way, then it is Belega in second place. These two battling over third. You've got uh, Canet, first of all, followed by Albert Arenas. Now, 
battling very... Sorry, uh, Arenas is second, it's Canet, and uh, I'll get there in the end, Luke. Bulega is second, yes. then it's Arenas and Canet battling for third place. Apologies. But these four at the front, well, as you don't take me as leading to account, are already starting to gap the rest of the field. Is it Ventsnader back there in fifth? Yeah, he's starting to get left behind a little bit. This is almost Danny Kent-esque, isn't it, from Zran Mare? He's on the same livery bike, it's the same Leopard racing outfit, and he's pulling away at the moment, but of course he's being helped by this three-way fight going on over second place. There's a gap then back to Ben Snader, who's pushing, really pushing hard now. You can see it in his riding down there on the orange bike in fifth place, the Dutch uh, Academy-supported rider who started up there on the front row, had a bad start in Ben Snader and he's now fifth in the race. Arbelino is still sixth, and we'll update you on the rest of them as they come through to finish the second lap, because there's all sorts of drama going on further back in the pack. But it definitely looks like Belega is closing that gap to Mir at the front, so maybe uh, we, you know, we don't have to throw the Moto3 rule book out the window just yet, because it does look like uh, Belega will close him down slightly. That's visually though, I might be proving wrong with the type speed. And it looked like a little bit of front-end chatter as well there for Mir as he made his way around the last corner. You are absolutely right, Luke. It's only half a second fastest up of the race so far to Belega as they come through to complete the first flying lap. Arenas and Canet are side by side in the battle for third. Belega took eight tenths out of Mir on that lap, so uh, Mir's early pace, obviously, not that impressive as we thought. So it'd be very interesting to see what he could do on this lap now. Everyone else lapping pretty much in the 152s. There's Arenas third on the Leglis bike. Canet is right behind him, number 44 on the junior team Australia Galithia bike. So it's Canet with the blue livery, the dark blue livery, but there's Bulega in second place. A seasoned campaigner in many ways in this uh, championship now, even though he's only 15 years of age, would you be? But look how close they are to the hairpin. Ben Snader is catching them as well. Bo Ben Snader is catching Canet in the battle for fourth. Ben Snader definitely settling into a rhythm. It's interesting there to see how much more stable Bulega's bike was under braking than uh, Mir's, because obviously that's where he's making up a lot of the time. Mir's bike was moving all over the shop, while uh, Bulega was able to kind of casually pick his spot and tip in. Oh, we've lost Adam Noridin from the race, apparently. It just flashed up on the timing screen. He's gone down at turn 11. That was the leading Malaysian rider in the Asia Talent Cup series last year. There were six Japanese riders who topped the standings. The Malaysian Noridin, who did actually race here and scored a point in yeah. the CEV race here last year in Motor 3, but Noridin is out of the race. So first retirement of the season, that's a big shame. But uh, Kind of gutted for him having come so far across. Yeah. We saw how much work they were putting in, but that, that's racing, isn't it? As you can see here, though, Arenas uh, has just been taken by. Is that Canet coming through yes, Arenas? Yes, yep. Canet is through. So the two Spaniards battling around there with each other for third place at the moment. So Stray Galithia moves ahead of the Iglesias Academy bike for the time being. Honda versus KTM. And there's the two leaders at the front. Brulega now will be in a position to pass with his KTM right up behind Mears Honda as they come through to start lap four. Look at them, top of your picture. There's the leaders. They're side by side and now. In fact, Belega's gone into the lead, crossing the line. Look at that. He takes the lead pulling out the slipstream and puts a couple of bike legs on me already and once again his times in that he was half a second almost quicker than me so I think Belega might try and pull away here but maybe me now he's got someone to kind of look at and actually just settle into a rhythm behind him and uh, these two could pull away quite drastically. A yeah, strong season for Belega last year, he was uh, on the podium twice, once here in the Algarve, once the previous round at Navarra. Oh, it's tight, and Mir is right up behind him. This is only that four of 16, we're nowhere near halfway through. And a bit of a moment there for Belega, coming out of the left-hander at turn four. Oh, and another one down into five. Look at the front end of Belega's bike, it's incredible. Did he manage to get it stopped, or did Mir take advantage of a possible error there? Look at the top of the screen. Yeah, Mir is in front, Mir did get past Belega who made a mistake down at turn five. What did, what's that commentator's casting? You say how stable his bike looked under me. <laughs> <laughs> he just couldn't get it stopped, could he? Right, here's the battle for third. This is Canet, uh, who is the number 44. Started sixth on the grid, and as I mentioned, was slow to pull into his grid spot. Arenas is the number 11. He started fourth on the grid, and he's right up behind him. Ben Snyder is 1.3 seconds further back in fifth place. Jala Massia, great stuff for Massia, the 14-year-old is sick then what's this coming through on the timing screen now rider 21 has been given a ride through penalty for forming up in the inc in an incorrect grid position that's a bit amateur i'm afraid to say vincente for, perez yeah, on vincente the Mercado perez. Mercado bike that's a 17 year old from valencia so uh, that's a bit of a shame he was supposed to be 24th on the grid he obviously didn't start 24th Luke. i don't know whether that means anybody else was forced into a different starting position as well yeah that's uh Mir's teammate as well so uh one, <laughs> one rider leading and one unfortunately one rider take a ride for a penalty which I think is going to be a rather severe penalty here with the length of the pit lane and the speed these guys going. Yeah, so Perez picks up the unenviable record of taking the first ride through in the CV this year and look at this side by side look at Mir right down the pit well that was intentional that was yeah. absolutely intentional he moves across allows Belega through and now he's going to follow him yeah. all the way down the start finish straight. 
exactly what I was saying in the last time, but I thought he would do if, if uh, Belega hadn't made that mistake, is he's just going to settle in behind him, conserve his tyres, keep the pace, don't have to push things on, and uh, yeah, these two obviously lapping a lot quicker than everyone else, they, uh, pretty much the only two riders in the 152s, 152 152s for both of them on the last lap, where Canet is doing a 153-0, so... You know, that they are a class above the rest of the field at the moment, but it looks like, just like it, this is bike race, and, and uh, you know, we are going to have a battle at the front that will come down maybe to the last lap, and we're only on lap five, though. This is where Belega made the, st uh, the mistake down into the turn five hairpin here last time round, no such error this time, so Belega, as I say, sixth in the championship, twice a podium finish here last year, Mir started on pole position here today, great start to the season for Juan Mir from Parma de York, 17 years of age versus 15 years of age for Belega. But Mir, I mean, let's not uh, hide from the fact that Mir was right up there. He was challenging Jorge Martin for the Red Bull Rookies title last year and uh, won three races. All sorts going on further back. We're watching the leaders oh. and Belega again makes a mistake. This time it's up at turn 11 and Juan Mir picking up the pieces. Thank you very much again. Once again, though, I tell you what, that just, it was a mistake. That's not heavy braking area. You kind of wonder if he's just let through. These two might be playing a bit of mind games here because he's not immediately trying to pass him back. He's almost quite happy to let him drop back. It will be interesting to see if these are just letting each other pass to take the front to see, as you say, literally analyse each other's where they're quick and where they're slow around the track. They're certainly being sensible with each other because they're allowing themselves to pull away from the rest of the field, aren't they? Because we've got Canet and Arenas who are battling for third and fourth. They're three seconds behind these two at the front now. Let's see what Juan Mir does this time. A lap ago, he moved across towards the pit wall side, clearly was allowing Belega to move ahead of him. Maybe this time he's going to sit in front of him, which he's doing see what sort of toe Belega gets and what he might be able to do down at turn one but don't forget for the last lap the 16th and final lap in 10 laps time the finish line is very very early on down the start finish straight now Belega definitely have made a move there and decided not to on the inside so I think you're right they're both just wanting to not trip each other up too much to secure the win four seconds they are now ahead of Canet in third place and uh, I think we might see them just getting involved a bit more with two laps to go Look in the background, Luke. Bo Bensonader has absolutely caught Aaron Canet and Albert Arenas now in the battle for third place. Remember, Bensonader made a really bad start. He'd love to be on the podium, though, to start the season. This is the leaders. Now, Mir is carrying a lot of speed into the left hand at that five, but he's pulling away a little bit now from Belega. So let's see how they play this over the next few laps. It's Mir in the lead here from Belega. Canet is still third from Arenas, but Bo Bensonader right behind him. Jauma Masia is sixth, and it's Arbelino. Howie, the Malaysian, has just dropped behind Arbelino, so they're 7th and 8th. Then it's Dalla Porta from Italy, and Valtellini is 10th. And there is a great battle going on for 7th there between Arbelino, Paui, uh, Dalla Porta and Valtellini, because they're all separated by less than 6 tenths of a second. And uh, that, uh, that's heating up, as you say, for 7th position, where at the front it does look like near, maybe it's starting to pull away from Belega. Definitely is for now. Wow, that's a huge gap actually, considering how close they've been battling out for the last few laps. He's pulled that within half a lap. Now, is this intentional stuff from Belega, or has there been a mistake made, or is Mir just putting the hammer down? It might be a little bit of all three factors, to be quite honest with you, but let's just see what happens over the next few laps. There was only 76 thousandths between them when they started this lap, because we know they were pretty much side by side as they cross the line. Visually, it looks as though Belega's pushing on a bit harder now. This is the battle going on just behind for third position and Canet look at Arenas. Ben Snader look yeah. at him Ben Snader having caught Arenas and Canet and actually he's looking to make a move with him straight away here look. Dutch rider on the orange bike with the quite distinctive orange leathers as well for the uh, Dutch racing team here he comes then right up behind Albert Arenas there's the two leaders and Belega has moved ahead of Juan Mir so obviously they are just playing the game this is going to keep going on and on and on we're coming up to the halfway point of this 16 lap race now well Mir you comes can come back through on first him. this time if you want to <laughs> I think we should stop trying to predict who's doing what between these <laughs> two because it, it, yeah it's, it's obviously completely unpredictable but the battle for third place here now is really heating up Ben Schneider having you know made up a lot of time to get on the back of Arenas' wheel and uh, I think he's going to start making a move on them and that will be interesting because these guys are dropping back consistently from the leaders five seconds that was the second of the lap so I don't think they're going to be too concerned with the race win but that final step on the podium and obviously the important 16 points look at this fight further back as well there's the message along the bottom of the screen we mentioned that before Vincente Perez the 17 year old Spaniard formed up in the uh, incorrect grid position bit of a rookie error there so he'll be taking a ride through penalty very soon indeed but look at this further back Luke this is the battle for seventh we're talking about with Masia now uh, they're on the uh Messi, apologies, I'm going mad, it is. Messi of Della Porta, Paoli, Valtellini all getting involved. And uh, in fact, Arbolino has now kind of fallen back into the grass of this group as well. 
Don't worry about going mad in a Moto 3 race, by the way. It's always this crazy, isn't it? Particularly in the CV. We have a hell of a fight going on at the moment, but what a great battle this is then. Halfway down the top ten, Ben Snader now right up with those two in the battle for third and fourth and fifth positions further up the road. But this is the fight, the multiple fight going on with Arbelino, Masia, Dalla Porta, Powie's in there as well. Back to the front, Mir again appears to have gapped Belega, but as we know that uh, could just be them showing around. The gap last time they crossed the line was three tenths of a second, let's see what it is now. The leg is in the toe, and it's going to be less than three tenths, it's one tenth. Now, how are they going to play at this time? We're not going to get too excited because this is what we always see, isn't it? The Moto yeah. 3 World Championship as well. This is the Junior World Championship. They'll keep exchanging positions, they'll size each other up, and then they'll go for it on the last lap. Here's the battle going on. Well, three abreast this time, and Ben Snader, for the first time, hits a podium position since making that bad start. Arenas drops down to fourth place, and then you've got... Uh, Canet in there in fifth position. This battle is going to rage and rage as well. The problem they have is that they're seven seconds behind the two leaders. And Ben Schneider has done them both, which is incredible. He's moved up into third place ahead of Arenas. Not quite sure what happened there, but he managed to take Canet and Arenas in one corner almost. He did. It was a great toe, wasn't it? They went side by side, three of them down the start, finished right, pulled out, dived up the inside, and there he is, up to third then. Goes Bo, Ben Schneider. There's your battle at the front. It's still... Uh, Bulega from Mir, and as Luke said just a moment ago, that amazing fight going on for the back. The sixth position is Armelino, Valtellini, Masia, Dalla Porta, and Parry all battling over sixth down to tenth place. It's further back, by the way. Van Heersen is still 11th. Then it's Polanco. Senna Yamada, the two time Japanese champion, is running in 13th position at the moment from Lorenzo Petraca, and David Sanchez is 15th. Uh, something's happened to Ben Schneider there because he's lost both positions that uh, he had made up down the start-finish straight. This is going to be a battle, but as you say, it's interesting to see Arbolino having been sucked back into that battle. There was originally those guys fighting out for seventh. Arbolino seemed okay, but now he finds himself in the class of Valtellini. And uh, I think we're seeing a 6 7 rider battle there for sixth position now. He's a Talent Cup fans tuning in, by the way. We lost, I'm afraid, Adam Noridin very early on in the race, but the other two are still running. Kaito Toba. He's only one position away from the points, but six seconds further back. Toba, reigning champion, is 16th. And Yutadata, who finished second to him last year, but was carrying an injury earlier this season after a pre-season training accident in Catalonia. Yutadata is 20th. So we'll uh, keep you updated on what's going on further back in the pack. We are now past the half race distance point, so we hit the 50% mark, and we are seeing the two leaders eight seconds ahead, nearly nine seconds ahead, and then this three-way strap. Three wide, look at third. that. The Gugis KTM, uh, Ben Schneider on the Dutch racing team bike. Well, uh, for, now, <laughs> for now he's ahead, Luke. For now he's yeah, ahead. Sorry, I just stopped speaking there because <laughs> I was like trying to work out who is actually where. That's just incredible. Ben Schneider once again has gone ahead, ahead of the Gugis bike and the junior Australian Glitzy machine uh, of uh, Massia. So it, it's. Don't forget as well, they've had some time to test, haven't they, last week before the CEV meetings this year. There'll be a test, they had a two day test, but there was a lot of rain, which certainly didn't help things here in Portugal and obviously we're all getting familiar with the new liveries the new colours yeah. and everything as well it's uh, Ben Snyder on the orange bike there very easy to distinguish him then you've got the Leclerc bike of the Rennes second in the train and then it's the junior straight Galithi bike of Canet in third in the battle but fifth in the race Canet's not Messia that was yeah me getting confused apologies ah, right. it's, I see the Australian Galithi bike and I get excited but Ben Snyder leads then as they come down into the uh, left hand at turn nine Look at Going the line. Up the hill. Yeah, sorry, Luke. Look at the line. It's so distinctive. Ben Snyder goes defensive. These are your leaders. They've been battling like this all race long so far. They're nearly nine seconds ahead of the group now in third, fourth, and fifth, which we're obviously keeping close tabs on as well. The TV director is doing a superb job, yeah, I have really to say. Is actually. <laughs> Switching between the action is very hard yeah, to try. It's difficult. Especially because these guys keep gapping each other and then closing the gap and overtaking each other. But it is a real battle of first place. And as you say, they're eight and a half seconds now ahead of Canada in third. This is the inaugural race in the Moto3 Junior World Championship for 2015. These two get the power on out of that last corner. They come shooting past our commentary box window now. And it is Ranmir moving out to his right-hand side, just fractionally there behind Nicolo Belega. And look at the gap in the background. There they are. They finally decide to make an appearance. 9.2 seconds behind the leaders are Ben Snader, Canet and Arenes. There they are. And then further back, as you say, the battle for uh, sixth place has been well and truly joined by uh, all the guys who are battling out for seventh. Arbolino in sixth, Valtellini in seventh, Dalla Porta has gone down a position into eighth, and Massi has moved up into ninth, ahead of Powell in tenth. 
Yeah, still two more races coming out later on as well. We've got another Moto2 encounter and then the second Superbike race as well. We won't get too much away, but we had some great action earlier on. This is the only Moto3 race, though, of the day here in Portugal. And then it's Le Mans and then it's Barcelona. And we move through to Valencia at the end of the season on the 15th of November. Let's just regroup then. Let's just take stock. We're on lap 10 of 16, first race of the season. Belega is leading Swanmere by just about a tenth of a second. They keep swapping places. That's going to go to the end, we're quite sure. And they're nine seconds ahead of this three-way battle for third place. You've got Bo Ben Snader from the Netherlands in third, just a week after the Dutch round of World Superbikes, in which Michael Vandermark absolutely shone last weekend with uh, two fantastic results. I won't give it away too badly in case you're still looking to watch it back. But great result there last weekend. I was there, the crowd went mad. So good stuff at the moment for Holland in uh, motorbike racing. Ben Snader is third, then it's Canet and Arenas fourth and fifth. These are your leaders. Very, very interesting dynamics here. It's, it's not just the, the actual battle on the track, it's the mind games, isn't it? And we have seen a few already. And if I'm not mistaken, visually Arenas seemed to be just dropping off the back of Canet and Ben Snader when I last saw them. Um, it was interesting when they last crossed the line, they were separated, him and uh, Canet, by less than 300 of a second. So we'll see as they complete lap 10, where they are now and how big the gap has become. Well, the line we go then, not too long to go in this race now, 93 thousandths between these two at the front. The gap just keeps increasing. It was 9.2 seconds back to third place last time. Chan Mir is just sitting here thinking, where am I stronger? Where am I weaker? He's not, of course, going to show his front wheel to Belega every single time. He doesn't want to give him a clue as to where he might dive through. And to be quite honest with you, on this particular circuit, there's all number of places where you could come through with a Moto3 machine. He's going to have to try and spring a surprise somewhere, though. And the problem is, but it's great for us, but the problem for me is that as soon as he's through, Belega will be able to attack again immediately. Yeah, and because the finish line is quite close to the exit of Turn 15 onto the start finish straight, there's not a mad drag through, so it will be the person, I believe, that's leading out of the final corner that will take the win. So it's very important that they get themselves sorted. And on the last lap, I think you will see them challenging and swapping positions a lot more. And I was kind of right there, actually. Rain has dropped back seven tenths on Canet on that lap. So uh, it seems to be dropping back. I don't know if he's had any tyre issues or anything like that, but just losing touch in the battle for the final podium spot. Quick update on what's going on further back. Adam Noridin was down on only the second lap of the race. It looks as though Simon Danilo, that's the brother, the younger brother of Joel Danilo, has pulled into the pits with a problem. And Leif Bue has pulled in as well. That's a shame from the rider who's uh, from uh, Villasar de Mar, just outside Barcelona. was speaking to him in the media centre this morning. He was really hoping for rain to try and negate some of the differences. But he's pulled into the pits as well. And these two getting very close again at the front. Sorry, got a little bit excited there. Davide Pizzoli, by the way, number 73. That's the teammate to uh, Arenas and he is uh, 22nd. Just so you know, Vincente Perez, who got the ride for penalty, has been given a black flag oh because dear. he ignored it. Obviously, maybe getting a bit too carried away in the racing, didn't see the black flag, uh, did, sorry, didn't see the ride for penalty flag, and now uh, he is disqualified for the race, been black flag. Well, that's a bit of a nightmare, to say the very least. Here's the confirmation of that coming up along the bottom of the screen for you. 21, Perez, black flag, ignoring the ride through penalty. You've got three laps to be able to take it once the official notification's gone out. They hold a number across from the starting gantry. Uh, Perez is still running around. He's actually uh, involved in a battle at the moment with Max Kapler there in 18th and 19th position. The black flag will be going out very soon indeed. I was also going to mention, by the way, the other uh, junior team rider, Senna Yamada. I mentioned him before, the twice Japanese champion. He's 12th at the moment. Well, I say that, he's just dropped down to 14th, so he's just had a bad lap. And look at this going on further back. Incredible. That's the 21 in the battle. <laughs> That's uh, Vincente Perez. Now, there are two Perez's. Oh, well, there he is. He's diving in, so we've seen the black flag. Let's see. Does he think he's got a ride through, or has he clearly seen the black flag? This is not going to be a rather... Well, it's not going to be a comfortable reception when the team receives him. Is he going to... No, uh, he's he just knows realised well there. What he's yeah, you can see as it's come through. I mean, that might be the frustration, thinking he's got a ride through, but um, as the team will beck him into the garage, he'll realise that it's not quite as simple as that. Yeah, and as you can see, changing down through the gears. That's the end of his race character building then for Perez 17 year old from just outside Valencia black flagged for ignoring a ride through penalty and the reason he had the ride through penalty is because he started in the wrong grid position but that's that's what we've been talking about though nurturing riders up and coming in the CV you learn from things like that hugely I mean how nervous would you be lining up on the grid for your first ride you know it's experience and you're 14 years of age when you're going to do this you know they'll be feeling so much pressure that it's an easy thing to do and he'll learn from this I'm pretty sure he won't do that again I was going to give you a quick mention, by the way, of uh, Tony Arbolino's teammates in the second one of the uh, 658 box. That's Stefano Bautolini, the number 43 in the race. He's, yeah, he's still running as well, and he's up there in seventh place. Great stuff.
now then sort of dynamic what sort of action are we going to see between these two at the front they're coming up to lap one of the back markers hopefully he'll move out of the way I believe that is uh, Cristiano Carpi because I think uh, Nunez has retired as well now he's the rider who actually didn't qualify but was given a special dispensation to start so I believe it's the number six Cristiano Carpi they're coming up to lap the 18 year old from Reggio Emilia in Italy I'm sure the blue flags will obviously go out he'll be waved out of the way and these two will make their way through battle for third is still Kenneth Bensnader and Arenas it's anyone's third place you could throw a blanket over them to be honest and then four seconds back to Arbelino we haven't seen much of Arbelino but he's done a really great job so far he's running in six it's a bit of a lonely six loop but really solid start to the season for Arbelino he was really getting sucked into that battle for seventh with Valtellini Della Porta Vargas Idem and Petrarca but he's managed to get the second now between himself and Valtellini so yeah comfortable position there maybe he saw the guys behind him got the mess in his pit ball and just started to uh, put the hammer down but he is comfortable in uh, sixth position yeah that's Tony Arbolino the reigning Italian pre-Moto3 champion now moves up then to the CV the junior world championship here as it is now known CV itself started back in 1998 of course it was the 125s in this particular category at the time and uh, an initiative put together by Dorna Sports a lot of people at Dorna are very uh, proud I think it's fair to say and that's yeah. not boasting that's just fair to say because they have done a great job with oh and Ben oh. Stader makes a mistake that's exactly what he did not want to do surely any chance of a podium's gone now at least he's rejoined he will be fifth but he's dropped behind in fact he's sixth he's dropped down another one as well disaster yeah Arenas who had dropped almost two seconds behind those guys they're coming through to uh, still the position as well now Ben Stader has got a lot of work to do to make up the lost time because it looks like Canet has disappeared off into the Horizon to uh, claim and make third his own. Yeah, you're right. I thought Ben Snyder would rejoin sixth. It, it is fifth because one of the bikes there was a back marker, but you're absolutely right because Arenas here has dropped right back as well. What happened? They're all together. This is a replay of turn five. Now we've cut later on in the lap. This is at the top here at uh, turn 11. It looks as though he dived inside there, got it wrong, dived inside Canet, got it wrong, and out wide. And now he is trying to make his move on Arenas. Arenas, I think, had just started to drop back. He was starting to lose pace, lapping about half a second slower than the others. And uh, yeah, as you can see, a bench later should take him down its turn one. Here's the battle back at the front of the race. And 15 seconds in front of them. Only three laps to go now between Nico Belega and a possible victory or would it be Juan Mir who started from pole position I wouldn't really want to say who my money's on because oh, oh he's down Belega is down well my money's not on Belega that's for sure out of the race or can he rejoin surely victory now then for Juan Mir who will pull away into the distance can Belega get restarted oh it's a nightmare for Belega it looks like he just lost it on the bump actually as you were saying on the hairpin on turn five he was still breaking I think as he hit the bump and he just lost the front end which is a nightmare for any rider to feel it go from you on a low side like that especially when you're in the lead of the race and it looks like now Mir is going to be on challenge 12 seconds in the lead to take the victory incredibly Belega's rejoined he's still running second but uh, Aaron Canet is now right behind him in the battle for second place so Canet has shaken off Arenas Ben Snade has made the error and dropped even further back and all of a sudden Canet who was running fifth a short time ago could now be challenging Belega for this second place what a development well it'll be interesting to see if there's any damage to Belega's bike it looks like there isn't though he seems to be riding okay and so it looks like it will be able to recover and could be unbelievable scenes really to be able to crash be that far ahead remount your bike and still get on in second place well we knew didn't we we knew something was going to give there they've been sizing each other up for a long time and Mir sat patiently in second place I wonder, were those the mind games there from Juan Mir? Because we saw Belega run wide there early on in the race. Do you remember? Yeah. Mir came through, and for most laps, he has sat behind. I think intentionally sat behind Belega down into the left-hander at Turn 5. There's your gap. That is incredible. You are, believe it or not, watching a Moto3 race. It's nearly 12 seconds now, and Canet is right up behind Belega. Is the bike damaged, as Luke suggested it might be? It certainly scrapes along the ground. On, I believe it's left hand side hopefully we'll see a replay of that in a few moments two laps to go Tramir surely victory is coming his way very shortly and how often are we getting used to seeing a light blue livery of the kind of leopard car mate the Mercado team here leading a Moto3 race by over 10 seconds this is obviously Danny Kett at the Moto3 World Championship the second president almost it looks like one there obviously because Belega Cresto will um, go and say a couple of victory here with some of the penultimate lap already yeah, remarkable. 11.6. Well, they're still second, then it's Canet. What's Ben Snader doing? He's still just ahead of Arena, so that battle's going to go right down to the wire as well. Arbelino sixth. Dada Porto is seventh for Italy. Then it's uh, Arbelino's teammates, only two play positions behind. That's Stefano Valtellini. Jamba Macias had a great start to the season. He's ninth at the moment. 
having uh, started seventh in the race, but a great start to the season nonetheless. Then it's Powie, the Malaysian, in tenth. Aaron Palanco is eleventh. Sanchez Van Haren, the Dutch rider, we talked about him earlier. KO beat him. Uh, yeah, yeah. KO beat him exactly. And look, it's changed. It has changed. Canet has passed Bulega, taking advantage of the error we saw just one lap ago. And brilliant stuff. Aaron Canet, the number 44 on the junior Australia Galicia team bike, is up into second place. Now, this is incredible because Belega's actual best pace in the race is over a second quicker than Canet's fastest lap. So, I don't know if there is damage to that bike from Belega. It might be slight, it might be a confidence thing. You know, he might just be a little bit wary, didn't know why his bike went down into turn uh, five. So, yeah, it's unusual to see, as you say, because someone who was lapping so much quicker to be, uh, to be losing a position like that. Now, don't panic. That was not Juan Mir in the gravel at the final corner. I had to pause for a second while you were talking there, Luca. I was just holding my breath because I saw a rider in the gravel being recovered by uh, the others, but it's, uh, it must have been a back marker. It was certainly a blue bite. Juan Mir, though, is still very much in the lead with an 11 and a half second advantage. On to the final lap. As you can see, Belega drafts back ahead of Canet. This is going to go right down to the wire. Ben Snyder is still ahead of Arenas in the battle for fourth. Just before the uh, the pass there, I was just running through the point scorers. It's Sanchez, 14th. Sene Yamada has moved up into 13th. And Lorenzo Petrarca is 15th. And look at Kaito Toba and Yuta Date there for the uh, Asia talent team. Both getting close to point scoring positions, although I think it'd be a little bit unrealistic for expect to be able to catch Petrarca. But Taibo into 16th, and they sandwich Luke Preston, the RBA Racing Belgium rider. Now then, this is the battle for second. Canet versus Belega. Belega has the advantage at the moment. He'll be kicking himself, and it's so difficult to get back in the race. I mean, been challenging for the lead. At least he uh, kept his head down. It could have all gone the other way. He could have stalled the bike, not been able to restart, and he managed to bump start it, didn't he? Remarkably. Rejoined the action. And he's now just got to focus on maintaining this second position. We are on to the last lap. Juan Mir is nearly 12 seconds ahead of these two. Where can Canet pounce, though? He's found this motivation to uh, catch Belega now. You get the feeling he's going to maybe just sit in the sit stream, maybe have a go out of the last corner. And what, like, obviously we saw Canet and Benchenado run wide, but uh, it's interesting that Benchenado has managed to keep Arenas at bay after, uh, you know, the incident where we thought that Arenas would actually kind of get back into the tail of him and maybe retake fourth place. Um, but yeah, it looks like they're quite settled in the top six now, actually. Does indeed. It's certainly settled here at the front. Juan Mir, three victories in the Red Bull MotoGP Rookies Cup last year. Pole position here today. And he comes through to win the first race of the 2015 Moto3 Junior World Championship. It is Juan Mir from Mallorca who will get that second place. It's Canet versus Belega. Canet has got ahead of him. Canet's taken that by quite a distance in the end, hasn't he? Belega will be gutted to have crashed out from the lead at turn five with only two laps to go. It was on the penultimate lap when it happened, wasn't it? But still, vital 16 championship points for Belega going forward. That's not a bad result. Ben Snyder will be annoyed about the bad start, but at least he's fought back up into fourth place. Albert Arenas, very solid ride for him. He's fifth, and it's Lorenzo Dalla Porta who passed Stefano Valtellini on the last lap for sixth place. Jamma Masia, Powie and Polanco complete the top ten, but uh, that was ominous stuff, it must be said, from Juan Mir. I know Belega made the mistake, but he forced him into that one, didn't he? He really did. There was a lot of pressure from him, and obviously if you're lapping and you know that Mir is behind you, his pole sitter, he's got probably the better outright one-lap pace. And yeah, and look at that, Kaita de Toba has managed to take a point for the Asia talent team. That's a brilliant result for him, finishing in 15th. And do you know why? Because Tony Arbolino had a problem. Perhaps that was the rider who was in trouble. I'm not, I'm not sure, but perhaps that was, certainly had a problem anyway. What a shame, Tony Arbolino then drops back. That's why he was falling back behind Dada Porter and co. Running sixth on the last lap, Tony Arbolino for the Marco Simoncelli 658 team has stopped or crashed. What a shame. More lack of luck again because Arbolino had a similar problem in Valencia at the end of last season. Uh, the bike didn't get away from the start line. This time it's all gone pear shaped at the end of the race. So bad news for Arbolino. He'll have to regroup and come back for Le Mans and hope for more there. Can it? Great stuff. Number 40 for the Australia. Oh, look at that. The fan clubs here as well. <laughs> Yes, it is. Second place for Aaron Canet, number 44. Just 15 years of age he is from Valencia. One of the several riders from Valencia in the CV this year. Three races last year, still finished 23rd in the championship on the Honda, despite only taking part in three races. And Aaron Canet really making the most of the error there from Nicolo Belega on the penultimate lap when he was battling Juan Mir for the lead. 
and Canet finishes second. For the record then, it was a 10.4 second gap from Mir back to Canet in the end. Bullega completing the top three. Then it's Boben Snader and Albert Arenas. We'll get the full rundown in a few minutes' time. Luke's now uh, scampered off down to Park Ferme to catch a word in English and Spanish with the Mallorcan winner, Juan Mir. And that is Nicolo Bellega. He has, he's, hasn't he? Oh no, I thought he missed the pit lane entrance for a moment. Sorry about that. I thought I'd just pause and wait. This is the moment though. Penultimate lap of the race. He was in the lead at the time. Hit the bump in the middle of turn five. And quite clearly, I think that was a word. It's better that we did not hear from the pit wall there. As Bullega slides out of action. You have to say, though, all credit to him for keeping his head, getting back in the race, and he was still running second because it was such a huge gap back to Canet, who was third. And you have to say as well, well done to Aaron Canet for having pulled away from Ben Snyder and Arenas. Of course, they made their mistakes as well, but he was there, ready to fight for that second place, and fight he most certainly did. So the Aaron Canet fan club seems to be out on the track. There's Ramir fan club remaining in the grandstand. Brilliant stuff. Juan Mir wins then the first Moto3 Junior World Championship race. He's from Parma in Mallorca, 17 years old. Finished second in the Red Bull MotoGP Rookies Cup last year. Won in Jerez, won at Bruno, won at Motorland. And now he's won here at Portimao. And don't forget, it's a brand new circuit for many of these riders as well. As I was saying early on, only, as I count down the list, seven of the riders who competed in the series last year were riding here again today. So for many of them, they've had to learn the track with the test last week, which happened in the rain, and then the race meeting itself. So Juan Mir does it at Portimao. Canet moves ahead of Belega, who could challenge for victory, but dropped back on the penultimate lap with the low side at turn five. Ben Stader and Arenas, great battle going on there. And then you've got uh, Dallin Porter in sixth place. Baltolini, Massia and Power. You have to feel for Tony Abellino, who would have finished sixth but dropped back. And well done, Kaito Toba, reigning Asia Talent Cup champion, picks up a point at the start of the Junior World Championship season. Juan Mir, though, it is who leads the way, leads the championship, takes victory by 10.4 seconds, pushed Bulega into a mistake. And he's about to catch up with Luke Wilkins down there in Park Ferme. Shame for Aleish Bue, who retired. Simon Danilo pulled into the pits, and of course we saw the problems for Perez, who was black flagged for ignoring a ride through, which was given to him for forming up in the wrong place. Down to Luke. So Juan, victory in the first ever Moto3 Junior World Championship race, and well, denied a battle with Belega at the end there, it's a shame. Uh, yes, uh, it was a fantastic, fantastic battle. Uh, I know that um, Bulega and, and me can, can escape to, uh, from the other group and uh, that uh, it's, uh, it's uh, for me it's, it's very, this victory is perfect, uh, the first, it's the best way to begin the championship and we will see in the next race in Le Mans. Uh, bueno, ha sido una carrera muy divertida porque uh, sabía que, que Bulega y yo éramos los que teníamos más ritmo Y bueno, lástima que, que se haya caído, uh, pero, pero bueno, estoy muy contento porque esto es la, una de las mejores maneras, la mejor manera de empezar el campeonato y, y bueno, ahora ya veremos, ya pensando en Le Mans. Gracias. De nada. Yes, it was a shame that uh, Belega made the error, but I don't think Jaramir is going to be complaining. 25 Junior World Championship points for him. Let's look back then at this opening Moto3 Junior World Championship race of the 2015 season. Red lights went out, away they went. It was a bad start from the front row of the grid for Bo Ben Snyder on the orange bike. He dropped back into the clutches of those following. Superb getaway for Jaramir from pole position to pull away from Nicolo Belega at this stage. Then a real battle started to emerge in the fight for third between the likes of Albert Arenas and that was something we did not see during the race some debris there somebody's uh, bike disintegrating down the start finish straight thankfully they cleared the debris obviously this was the battle going on further back then you had Arenas in the battle there as well and these two were toying with each other as we said at the time during the race it was Belega versus Mir and a huge moment there we didn't see that early on either for the number 41 running out wide what a recovery that was from Simon Danilo I wonder whether he had the damage and then pulled into the pits we know he retired after that uh, well held Mir versus Belega at the front of the field they were sizing each other up and this was the battle going on for third as Ben Snader fought his way through took advantage of some of the dramas going on 
but we just knew it was a matter of time before something really dramatic was going to kick off at the front of the race. Practically every single corner they were together. This was the move further back. Canet at that point lost the position to Ben Snader, then went on the attack, forced Ben Snader into this off-track moment at turn 10. And then just moments later, this man lost it at the front of the field. Down went Belega, somehow rejoined in second place and was then passed by Canet as they crossed the line. But Joan Mir from pole position wins the first race of the Junior Motor 3 World Championship in 2015. Canet goes ahead of Belega there by only four tenths of a second to pick up a superb second place finish and Belega picking up the pieces for third. Wow, we goodness gracious me, we've been out of breath a few times today and let's hope it happens again later on because we've seen a heck of a battle here in Moto3. It is a shame Belega, and you can see Belega there with the long hair on the right-hand side, clearly annoyed with himself. Nevertheless, it's still a great start to the season. When you put things into perspective, he's still on the podium. But there's Juan Mir from Mallorca, second in the Red Bull MotoGP Rookies Cup last year. Just lost out to uh, Jorge Martin, who in the end actually had a fairly comfortable advantage. Martin has now gone on to the Moto3 World Championship, and that's some things Juan Mir will be hoping to do as well next year on the top step of the podium. There's Belega. Bittersweet third place to put it mildly, and he's done the smart thing, thanking the team. He is a member of the VR46 Rider Academy, so uh, knows Valentino Rossi. They uh, actually trained together as well over at Rossi's Ranch in Italy, just outside, uh, well, in his hometown, actually, of course, not far from the Mazzano track. There is Canet, who finishes second. Now there's going to be quite a cheer, I think, from the fans in the grandstand there, right opposite the commentary box window. Have a listen. The Juan Mir fan club are jumping up and down, I can tell you, as their man takes victory in the first uh, junior World Championship race. Luke's back, hello. I actually just came across some of his fan club downstairs, <laughs> and they were so happy and excited. Even the language barrier was there. I managed to get across congratulations. So a very happy a team, very happy family, very happy fans, I think. And they'll be even happier now as the Spanish national anthem plays out for the Mallorcan winners. Juan Mir, first winner of the season in the Moto3 Junior World Championship. Well done, Juan Mir. Three wins in the Rockies Cup last year. Does the... Well, I'll get my words out. Great start to the season for him in the Junior World Championship here in Moto3. You're going to say does the double already? Uh, yeah, that's race. what I was, actually. I was <laughs> going to say does the double. And there, then, is what we talked about earlier. Uh, there's the lack of alcohol, of course, because they are underage, quite <laughs> frankly. So we're seeing this sort of lemonade sprayed around. It's not quite as bubbly as uh, the fresh, you know. Do you know what they Silly string. That would be much better. <laughs> right. Suggestions on a postcard, please to uh, Dawn of Sports. Luke Wilkins has put across Silly String. I don't know what else we <laughs> might get there, but uh, yeah, let's see. Or send, in fact, send a tweet in to, uh, to Motorcycle Luke. That will yeah, work, yeah. That'll be the easiest way to do that. But joking aside, Juan Mir, superb start to the season. 10.4 seconds ahead in the end. Look at Belega's face on the right-hand side. He knows he threw that one away, but at least it wasn't a non-score. It was a very strong 16 points and here is the confirmation of that. Mir Canet Belega obviously mirroring the results of this first race. And it's a great start to get 25 points, you say, in the first round for Juan Mir. Aaron Canet on 20 points. And Belega, although he crashed out from the lead, recovering to take the third step of the podium with 16 points. Ben Schneider, terrible start, but got back to fourth with 13 points. Arenas at 11, and Della with 10 points. And as we mentioned, Kaita Toba from the Asian talent team taking that final championship point in 15th. A real little coup for them, I think. Absolutely, Alberto puts his here as well, the full setups here. They're working with the same mechanics they worked with in the Asia Talent Cup last year. But as I say, what a shame for Tony Arbelino. I don't quite know what happened on the last lap. We saw some drama in the highlights. Uh, great save from Simon Danilo. We saw some, I know you were running back upstairs at yeah. the time, but one bike seemed to be disintegrating. There's parts coming off down the start finish straight, which we saw in the highlights package. But we don't know what happened to uh, poor old Tony Arbelino. There's Adam Norridan at the bottom of the list there. He unfortunately was the first retirement of the season and Alej Pugh pulled into the pit lane with some kind of issue as well. And uh, Perez it was. Vincente Perez who had the problem. He formed up in the wrong grid position. Was given a ride through penalty. 
obviously didn't notice he'd been given the ride to because he was so focused on the battle he was in and for that reason was black flagged from the race. I'm going to be honest with you, it's, it's so easy to do when you're out on track. Not that I have many years experience of racing at uh, this level, but no, it is so easy to do. You're so focused and obviously in amongst all of the action, the overtaking, worried about lines, breaking points, references, exit points, apexes. It's easy not to notice a flag being waved inside the track, and again, it's not like it's a lot of yellow or red flags being waved, it's a, it's a mixed difference. So I can sympathise with him, but oh, terrible in your first race to be kind of black flag. Great first race of the season then for the Moto3 Junior World Championship. Joan Mir leads the standings as the battle resumes at Le Mans in France on the MotoGP French Grand Prix weekend of the 14th, 15th and 16th of May. We're not over and done by any means yet here though at Portimao. Next up, the second race of the day for the Moto2 European Championship.